Well, in this video, I'll be going through my install of Ubuntu Server 1404.1 into my NAS. So I'm selecting UEFI generic SD reader off the list, and we shall install Ubuntu Server. If you haven't seen it before, Ubuntu Server is text only. It's not quite so easy to use as the GUI installer, particularly when it comes to formatting, but it's not too bad. Detect keyboard layout. No. I'm sure I've got better videos on my channel on how to do a install of Ubuntu server. I'll put some timings in the description below so you can jump forward to some of the other parts of the video that you might be more interested in. But to start with, we just got a video camera stuck in front of the TV because I can't do a screencast at this point. After I've done the install, I'll be SSHing into the box and doing a screencast from there from my main PC, so the quality will be a lot better. So I have to do the host name first, nas.tzd30d, the name I stick on my Wi-Fi. Right, I am doing a manual partition here. SDA is where I'm installing the operating system. It is a 32 gig solid state disk. The other three hard drives are part of the RAID, and there's only three at the moment because one drive was too corrupted to use with MDADM. Pity, I hoped it might still be usable, but uh, it didn't turn out to be the case. I might be able to use it for non-RAID uses. To start with, I'm selecting an EFI boot partition of 38 meg large. Next, I have a 15 gig extension 4 disk. So, use as extension 4. Format. Yes, format it. Mount point, forward slash, the root file system. You absolutely do need one of these for Ubuntu or any Linux install. Oh, mount options. Discard, no A time. That'll do. Done setting that one up. Another extension 4 drive. Use as, extension 4. Format it. Mount point none. I think I'll mount this later manually. So just leave that as default. So done. And finally we have a swap partition of two gig. I don't technically need one. Two gig is not really too much to worry about. Done. Finish partitioning and writes changes to disk. No mount point assigned for that extension 4 partition. Yes, that's going to be my backup, so that is not a problem. A, no, I don't want to return. Carry on. A, yes, writes those changes to disk. I get the option to install a few additional applications here, and all I want is OpenSSH and SMB servers. OpenSSH and Samba file server. Done. I will install everything else later on. Right, I'll connect in via SSH. Oh yes. Warning, remote host identification has changed. So you could have run that command there, but I tried that last time and it only worked once. So, easier solution. Remove home folder dot SSH, no one hosts, and I can no one hosts, and I can just press tab to auto complete on that. So now, authenticity can't be established. Do I want to continue? Yep, indeed. Right, excellent. So let's start off with updating the repositories. It is a boring thing, but I'll start with the updates, and if it all goes wrong here, then uh, I haven't done anything. Uh, no, I don't want upgrade, I want this upgrade. So I'm using a guide that I put together some time ago and I've just been adding little bits as I've gone along. There's some info on my website under the tutorials. So I've got create NAS with Ubuntu server. There's a bit of a guide here, some things there. Um, how, how to install SAB NZBD. How to configure Sickbeard. Couch Potato, yeah, all those are there. And I think as a result of what I'm doing here, I'll probably add in a couple more tutorials like how to set up an NFS server, 
and a little bit of how to do the raid because I'll be doing that um, that'll probably come in tomorrow but uh, you'll see it all as one video yeah I'll have to skip the raid at the moment and I'll go on and do yeah, I can start off from here and work through all I'll be able to do is install SAB into BD and just configure the Usenet servers. I can't set the download location because that's on the RAID. Why is that so large? What am I doing? Ah, the kernel has been updated, so I will have to reboot. No problem. Let's issue the reboot command. So I can reboot to the server without getting up. Perfect. So is the server back up? Ping nas.tzd. Yes, it is. Perfect. So SSH back into it. Control L to clear the screen. So let's hard code the other systems that are on the network. Yes, yes, I know I shouldn't necessarily do it this way, but I only have a few, so what the hell, it doesn't really matter. There's no real huge reason to do it this way around, but other than it might be slightly convenient to me. And.tzd, ping him back to me. Perfect. Now to install a SAB NZBD. Look what I'm missing here. That's no good. Control U. sudo su Let's add that back in there yeah 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 just get on with it right oh um apt get update in fact I should have multitasked a little bit shouldn't I damn Some prerequisite packages. Ah, not all of them needed now. Okay. No problems. Those are pretty much what you need to run SabNZBD. If you haven't seen it, I have got a review of it on my channel, but it is a method of downloading files from Usenet. It's kind of an alternative to torrenting, but it's a lot safer because I'm not sharing files with other people. I'm just downloading from one server, but it does cost me. Not very much though. This makes some changes to the configuration file. So I'm just filling out the username, host, and port. And you can have a look to see what's been done. So username quids. It's not advisable to run any of these web programs as the root user. You should always run it as a normal user. So host is will itself and I choose that port number. Lucky number fives. Right, what should happen now is service sub NZBD start. Okay. And if I go across to there, ah yes, perfect. Next Samba shares. Um, no, I'll do that a bit later on. Right, let's copy that. Um, so this is to install Webmin. Very handy configuration program, which I'm already in the root folder. Uh, hang about. No, that's what I need to do. Right, that. So let's download the key file. I know there's a method of doing this on one command line, but I can't remember it. <laughs> 64 megasecond here, yeah. <laughs> if only. Right, another apt get update. Right, some prerequisite programs. Installing Webmin. There is no reason for me to reboot straight away. I'm going to press on going down going a bit further down this list. So Webmin is now on there. Let's look at that. Yeah, understand the risks. 
And here we are, here is Webmin, a nice GUI administration interface for Ubuntu server. In fact, you can use it on many other Linux distros. I've got it running on my Raspberry Pi hardware. Uh, yeah, it's pretty limited to what's there at the minute because I've got quite a few more programs to install. It's quite a handy one, command shell. <sighs> There's some of the old commands from before. I can use that from my mobile phone and execute commands on the server. Bit of a faff to type that way, but <laughs> for laziness, it can be done. We can boot up and shut down from here. Look at all the things that are running. Anyway, I'll come back to that a bit later. So make directory on the mount partition for my backup drive. Then get the block IDs. So what I need, I need that number there. Is that the same number? No, not anymore. Copy. Save. sudo nano etsy fstab. So for my backup, UUID equals that number there. Control X, yes, absolutely fine. sudo mount dash A. So take ownership of the backup drive and I did the install of Sickbeard here. But since I've got a full video on that on my channel, I decided to drop most of this section. But I did run into an interesting problem here when I upgraded Sickbeard. So I'll just run through that a little bit here on this video. It said there was errors in the database. Uh, C, sudo service Sickbeard status. No PID file found for Sickbeard. Change folder across to home, Sickbeard. And I need Python. Sick beard Python. There we go. Checking database structure. Your database has been incremented past what version Sick beard supports. Right. The way around this. Go in here. Sick beard. Sick beard .db. Rename. Old Sick beard .db. Try it now. Whoa, okay. Do you want to exit? Yes. Anyway, let's try now, and we have Sickbeard working. Well, having got NFS running, now I'm going to set up Samba. Yes, I'm running both file sharing systems here because the Android systems don't really use NFS today. It's kind of a bit more difficult. So let's go across to the config folder. What have we got in there? The smb.conf file, dhcp.conf. What's in the dhcp file? Nothing. What's in the other one? Right, that's the default config file here. So let's see. Quite a lot in there. So let's create a backup of the config file first. Right, make sure that's there. Yes, it is. Now I have this example config file which I would like to use. Now, how best to use that? I wonder. Mm -hmm. I shall go across to Webmin, Samba file sharing, edit the config file. Right, let's dump it over. Control A, Control V. And I'm going to start with music. Path. Slash MNT, slash R disk, slash music. So, what permissions have I given it? Read, nobody and user is meant to be me, I guess. Write list. Add nobody here for, well, I guess, rid of that. Force directory mode. Yep. Read. Um, hang on. That meant to be a 775. 
Hmm. We'll see how that goes. Create mask 755. Hide dot files. Yes. You user equals nobody and me. Public. Yeah. Okay. Um, Browsable inherit permissions path force yeah valid users nobody and me right let's see what happens here save ah share comment no I thought I got rid of that let's just save that here so check if this is working what we need to do now is restart the Samba server isn't that handy. Restart the Samba servers. Ha! <laughs> Failed to restart. Thank you very much. Restart Windbind. Is it because it's not running? Is that the problem? Start. Stop it. Pseudo service. Okay, Samba. Status. SMBD is running. Okay, so pseudo Samba. Restart. What was wrong with that then? Why didn't that work before? Right, let's see what we have. Uh, I'm going to have to go to network. And it will be... Actually, what is it? I, f I can't remember. Oh yeah, Samba shares. Uh, work group. NAS. Oh, music. Four strings. Come on. Will it work? Yes. Can I write anything to the folder? Uh, let's go up a level. Music, create new text file. Uh, no. Okay, that's kind of good because that means I'm logging on as the user nobody and I can't write to this Samba share, which is what I want to achieve. Okay, well, I'm going to leave the video there now at this point. There's a few bits I actually cut out of it, like the creation of the RAID, the setup of the NFS file system, the setup of SabNZBD, uh, sick, sick Beard, Catch Potato. So I just thought, I've got all those videos on my channel, so I could leave this video being about 20 minutes long, whereas if I put all those other videos in, it would have been about 50 minutes long, and that's kind of getting a bit ridiculous. As it is now, the NAS has been up and running for about two weeks. I'm a bit slow at doing this video, but yeah, it's been running for about two weeks, and I'm really pleased with it. It's gone a bit faster than it used to under the old system, despite it being a slightly slower processor on paper. Whereas I've gone from a 1.6 gigahertz dual core to a 1. What was this? A 1.3 gigahertz quad core, I think it was. So yeah, it actually runs slightly faster. I'm getting read speeds well, about 110 to 130 megasecond, and write speeds of about 80 to 130 megasecond. So yeah, that's pretty good there. I'm quite pleased with that, and it copes with serving files to two systems at once. I mean, it probably could do a few more. I just haven't tried that much yet. There you go, that gives you an idea of how I set up my NAS in Ubuntu server. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.